This is Surah Yasin, and this was, of course, revealed in Makkah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us about the validity of the messengership of Muhammad sallam, about the akhirah and the resurrection and about faith and iman in this Quran. This surah, as the scholars of Islam mention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously goes around these three topics again and again. So at one point he'll mention how Muhammad sallam, is definitely a right prophet, how this Quran is definitely the best of books and the and a valid book that they should all take take and pay attention to. And number three, how the Day of Judgment is going to come and it is going to be so difficult upon those who disbelieve in this Qur'an. This surah is one of the surahs that the Prophet ﷺ used to love to recite. In fact, the linguistic imagery of the Qur'an in this surah is exquisite. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, Ar Rahman, the one who is generally merciful, Ar Rahim, the one who is specifically merciful to believers. Yaseen. Yaseen, the scholars have said many different meanings behind it. The first opinion states that Yaseen means the Quran. And in fact, Ibn Kathir rahimullah, mentions 15 opinions regarding what Yaseen means. So some of the scholars said Yaseen means the Quran. Other scholars said Yaseen means Ya Nas. Therefore, sometimes in the Arabic language, out of poetry and out of beauty, instead of actually saying all of the letters only some of the letters of these phrases and words are mentioned other scholars said no here the nas that is being intended is muhammad sallallahu that's why they said ya seen means ya muhammad wallahu ta'ala alam this does not seem to be the strongest opinion the stronger opinion seems to be what ibn kathir said which is the strongest opinion about all of these letters ya seen alif la mim all of these letters is that they all refer back to the Quran because right after it, very very next verse refers back to the Quran. The next sentence says, Wal Quran al Hakim, meaning I swear by the Quran, which is Al Hakim, the most wise. It shows that the Quran is not created, that it is from Allah, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created, Quran is not created. Innaka lamin al Mursaleen, verily, O you, O Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You are from the messengers Why did Allah have to say that, that Indeed you are from the messenger when it was known Because the disbelievers of Quraysh They said you are not a messenger Allah refuted them and said Rather you are from the messengers You are definitely a messenger of God Ala sirat mustaqim You are upon the sirat Which is the path mustaqim That is straight and upright so the Quran is Sirat al Mustaqim. The religion of Islam is Sirat al Mustaqim. The Prophet Sunnah is Sirat al Mustaqim. It is a straight path. Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim. Meaning this Quran is Tanzil from al Aziz al Rahim. The Aziz meaning the honored one, which is Allah al Rahim, which is the one who is most merciful, the most honored, most merciful God who has sent something down from Himself, which is. This Quran, which happens to be Sirat al Mustaqim. He has sent this Quran down, Tanzilum min Aziz al Rahim, li tundira. Li lam over here means in order, the reason why. So, why was this Quran revealed? Li tundira, in order that you may to warn a people, ma undira abahuhum, to warn a people whose forefathers were never warned. And whose forefathers were never warned? The Quraysh, because Quraysh had never had a prophet sent to them. Fahum ghafilun. As a result, they are completely unaware, completely lost, and completely oblivious to the truth of what is being proposed here. The other meaning of ma over here could mean, meaning that, meaning that which their forefathers were already warned about. You have been sent to a people in order to warn those people who were already Warned, meaning the forefathers were already warned about the coming of this messenger and about the, the, the meanings of this Quran. فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ Verily, indeed, they are people that are oblivious to the truth. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ 
ala aktharihim fahum la yu'minun it says that indeed the haq meaning the truth has already been established upon the majority of them so they will never ever believe meaning allah has closed their hearts to guidance their fate is sealed sometimes sometimes a person may say a word which angers allah so much that he will completely close your door to guidance and sometimes a person may say a word which Allah loves so much that he will write for you forgiveness and mercy and entry into Jannah despite all other sins that you do after it. So one of the things for example that makes Allah angry as an example is mockery especially of Islamic things. In fact many a times when people mock Allah or mock his deen or mock his prophet or mock his Quran on the other hand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves praise. Allah loves dua. Allah loves dhikr. So it may be because of a praise or a dua or a dhikr that you do for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write for you forgiveness forever. In fact, it was reported in an authentic hadith that Rasulullah and his companions were walking down a road. They came past the house of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They heard Ibn Mas'ud making dua to Allah. Ibn Mas'ud was praising Allah copiously. And then at that point, Rasulullah stopped. He heard Ibn Mas'ud making dua and then he said, ask him, he will give you. So Ibn Mas'ud right after at that point, he said, Oh Allah, I ask you for mercy on the day of judgment, for forgiveness from Jahannam. And I ask you to be the companion of Muhammad in Jannah. So at that point, Rasulullah said, he has been given, he has been given. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ The truth has been established on majority of them. فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ So they will never ever believe. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا Verily we have put in their a'naq, in their necks. أَغْلَال meaning locks. فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَانِ So the locks reach the chin. فَهُمْ مُقْمَحُونَ So they have raised necks looking down. The scholars said this means that Allah has put locks around their necks so they're not able to turn to the hidayah of the guidance of Muhammad when it does come to them. Other scholars said no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tied their neck, their hands to their necks, meaning that Allah has put their deeds and with their necks together they are not able to now go and accept Islam nor are they able to turn towards the hidayah and guidance when the hidayah and guidance comes to them. The scholars of Islam said of Tafsir said that this verse was revealed regarding Abu Jahl because Abu Jahl he came uh, one day and he saw Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying near the Kaaba he got very angry so what did he do he took a boulder and then he came near Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then what did he do as he was coming close he was lifting it up as he was lifting the boulder up his hands became paralyzed and stuck to that position so all he could do is just drop the boulder and the boulder just dropped in front of him and of course he could not get to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he came to these people who were his friends, the Makhzumiya, and he told them what happened, meaning, oh my God, I put this boulder and my hands could not move. So as a result, this verse was in reference to him. So one of the Makhzumiya, one of the children of the Makhzumiya, what he did was, he took a sword, so as he reached in front and he went to the Kaaba, he simply couldn't find him. Where is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He's not there. Where is he? Actually, he was in front of him, right there in front of him. But he could not see. And so the scholars of Tafsir said the second verse was revealed regarding the Makhzumiya. What was it? The fact that وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ And we put a cover in front of them and we put a cover behind them and we covered them up so he could not see at all. وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ And it is equal, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam عَلَيْهِمْ upon them أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ if you warn them, أَوْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ Or you don't warn them, لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They'll never believe. إِنَّمَا تُنذِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ Rather, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one you should be warning, is the one who follows the command, the dhikr, the, the, the reminder. وَخَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ And the one who fears Allah in secret. The one who fears Allah the depths of night. The one who fears Allah in his house. Because it's very easy to fear Allah in front of each other. But it's difficult to fear Allah when we are alone with our families or we are alone on our own. 
and that is the fear that matters. فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ Then give them the glad tidings of mercy وَأَجِرٍ كَرِيمٍ And a noble reward which is Jannah. إِنَّا verily us نَحْنُ Verily it is we نُحْيِ الْمَوْتَى We give life to the dead. وَنَقْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُ And we will write down what every human being has done or put forward as, as deeds. وَآثَارَهُمْ And the effect of the deeds. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala who said, this verse means that Allah will write down in our books everything we have done and the best of our athar is our children. That means whatever we do and whatever our children do will be written in our books. That means if your children are misguided and you have not told them to be guided, then you will feel their punishment and their pain too. On the other hand, Imagine if you trained your children, made them righteous. Then subhanAllah that day will come when you will also benefit from whatever they do in this dunya as well. Some of the scholars said, Atharahum means whatever is the effect of their deeds, meaning they applied the hadith of Rasulullah which is whoever does a good sunnah, then he will have that, the reward of that deed and the reward of whoever does that deed until the day of judgment. So the one who built this masjid, for example, not only gets the reward of the masjid and his building, will get a paradise and he'll get a house better than in Jannah, but also he gets the reward of whoever does whatever in this masjid ila yawmul qiyamah. This verse should put fear in the hearts of anyone who does sins publicly. So if you smoke, for example, which I consider it a sin, you might do it privately, no one else sees it, it's a sin for you. But because of you smoking, three other people start smoking and then ten other people also start smoking. Because how many more people will now continue to sin because of this? It will be written that you are now the one who tastes the sin of all of this until the Day of Judgment. Those who spread sins, like today, how quickly through social media can you spread your sins? Like a sister, she's putting makeup on, oh look at me, she takes a selfie of herself. She will feel the sin of that and all of the people and all the males and all, whoever fantasizes looking at that picture until the day of judgment. And every single thing we have allocated for it, accounted for it, refers to the Loh al Mahfud, which is with Allah, which contains the book of all our deeds and everything in it is all contained in Loh al -Mafud. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a story of this town called Antioch. Al-Qurtubi -Al said, all the Mufassireen, all the scholars of Tafsir said, the town that is referred to here is the town of Antioch, which is in greater Syria. The town of Antioch was a large fortress for the Christian em empire for a very long time. So therefore, to say that they did not accept the Hidayah of the messengers, it doesn't make sense. So perhaps what is referred to here is not the town of Antioch, it's some other town, Wallahu ta'ala alam, but the scholars of Tafsir have said, this is the town, and so Wallahu ta'ala alam, and Allah knows the best. وَضْرِبْ lahum And tell them, مَثَلًا Take the example or the story of أصحاب Qarya, People of the town of Antioch. إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ Mursalun. When the messengers came to them, which messengers? So these were two messengers that were sent by Isa salam to them. And the scholars of Tafsir said that what is referred to here, the, Muslim, the messengers, were the followers of Isa salam, right? The Hawariyun. When we sent the two of them, فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا So they disbelieved in them. فَعَزَّزْنَا So we strengthened them, a third one, as a follow-up. فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ So they all said, we have been sent by Isa to, the, to this town to tell you to worship only one Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلَنَا مِثْلُنَا They said, you are nothing but, messen, but, but like human beings like us. And this is also the statement of the Quraysh. وَمَا أَنزَلَ الرَّحْمَنُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ and no, Allah did not reveal anything from him. In antum illa takdibun, you are only lying. So the messengers were accused of lying. The liars 
are calling innocent people liars. Qalu, they said, Rabbuna, our Lord, Ya'lamu, He knows, Inna ilaykum la mursaloon, that we are indeed messengers sent to you by our Prophet Isa alayhi wa sallam. Wa ma alayna, and there is nothing upon us, illa al-balagh al-mubeen. Al-balagh, which is to spread the manifest message. Al-mubeen, meaning the manifest da'wah. We cannot force you. The only thing we have been asked to do is to pass on the message and that is what is our duty. Qalu, they said, Inna tatayyarna bikum. This is important guys. Inna meaning we, tatayyarna meaning we have had a bad evil omen because of you. Look what you did. Just because you, get, you guys came now, our gods are angry with us. So when the Quraysh for example had any musibah, any difficulty, they said it's you, Muhammad, you did it. Because of you, you came, and so Lat al Uzza got angry at us, and so they brought us this musibah. Fa illam tantahu, so if you don't stop, la narju mannakum, wala yamasannakum, and indeed something will touch you, minna from us, adabun alim, a very severe punishment will touch you from us. Qalu ta'irukum ma'akum. They said, you are the evil omen to yourself, meaning you are the ones who have caused this bad thing to come upon yourself by your disbelief in Allah. And, and now that you have been told, Bal antum musrifun. Rather, you are a people that are transgressing. Are you saying that we are the ones when we are the ones warning you that we are a bad omen? No, rather, you are the bad omen yourself because of your disbelief in Allah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse from, tells us a story of this man called Habib bin Musa al Najjar was a man who was upon Tawheed in this town. But he could not tolerate the shirk of the people. So he used to be inside the caves. And the caves were a bit further away from the town inside the mountain. Okay? And from the farthest part of the town came a man who is Habib bin Musa al-Najjar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in. And he came running from the farthest part of the town. Yes'a, running. Meaning, he is so worried that Allah's punishment might come, and he is so eager to give da'wah that he came running. Qala ya qawmi, ittabi'u mursaleen. Oh my people, follow the messengers. Why? Now he explains why. This is important. This is important because now it should tell you why we should follow Rasulullah. Ittabi'u, follow man la yas'alukum ajara, the one who is only giving you good advice and he does not want any reward for it. He's not asking for any money for it, no salary, no payment is he asking for this. Why won't you accept good advice when he's giving it for free? Man la yas'alukum ajran wa hum muhtadun and they are guided. Meaning you can see how upright they are. They speak the truth, they are positive people, they don't do evil deeds, they look after the poor, they look after the hungry and the sick. Wa ma liya and what is wrong with me or why shouldn't I? Why should I not worship the one who gave me, who brought me into existence? Meaning, isn't it logical to worship the one who created you? Why should I not worship the one to whom I will go back to? Should I take anyone else as aliha, meaning a god that is worshipped? If a Rahman wants a harm, لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا Their shafa'a, meaning their intercession will never ever help me if a Rahman wants to harm me. Meaning why should I worship these stones and these idols and these trees when if a Rahman wanted to harm me, these trees, these stones, they're, you know, asking them for any help would never ever help me against a Rahman. لَا تُغْنِي عَنِّي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُنْقِذُونَ And they will not be able to save me from the punishment of Ar-Rahman. إِنِّي إِذَنْ Meaning if I were to do that, then I would be most definitely لَفِي ضَلَالِ mubin. I would be in manifest error. The people became very angry. What did they do? They grabbed this man. How dare you? You're from us. In one narration, they took his limbs apart. So what happened? When he was being tied up, he screamed out loud. Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'oon. He said, everyone, 
I believe in your Lord, my Lord. So listen, believe in him. So therefore he died as the best of Shaheed. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ And we, وَمَا meaning we have not أَنزَلْنَا sent down عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ upon his people مِنْ بَعْدِهِ after his death meaning after the death of Habib Musa Najjar مِنْ جُنْدٍ from the armies من السماء from the heavens وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ and we didn't have to do, do it meaning they were so insignificant to us they were so pathetic they were so weak to us that all it was was Jibreel screaming and the sound of the voice of Jibreel was enough to destroy them, turn them into smithereens. In Kanat, it was nothing but illa sayhatan wahida. It was only one scream. Sayha. You know, a huge scream that comes from the deepest part of the throat. Fa'idha hum khamidun. And and just because of the scream they were khamidun. What's khamidun? To be completely vanished. So the tafsir mentions that Allah Zawajal told Jibreel to scream and all he did was scream once and because of the power of his sound everything exploded. This is how strong the voice of Jibreel is. In fact, scholars of Islam mention that Jibreel has the ability and power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him to destroy the earth. He is that powerful. Ya hasratan al ibad Man subhanAllah, this verse, you know, when I read it in Arabic, fills my heart with pity. Because here it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya Hasratan ibad, meaning, Oh, what a pitiful state are my slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the pitiful nature of the slaves after they disobey Allah. Ma yati him, there does not come to him, min rasulin, from a messenger, illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un, except that they used to mock him. Meaning, woe to these slaves of mine, that not a single messenger used to, had ever come on this earth, except that they mock my messengers. So how did they not expect Allah's anger to overtake His mercy and destroy them in His subhanAllah? Alam yarau, have they not seen? Kam ahlakna, how many we have destroyed? Qablahum min al qurun, how we have destroyed so many of them from the people of the past. أَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ That they cannot ever come back to this dunya or that they cannot find any signs of them at all. وَإِن كُلُّ لَمَّا جَمِيعُ, الل... جميع لَدَيْنَ مُحْضَرُونَ And it is only a little while before every one of them will be recreated and be present in front of me on the day of judgment. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 32 onwards talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so many signs after signs after signs. And so why is it that people disbelieve? وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ And an ayah for those people, if they could only ponder. الْأَرْضُ الْمَيْتَ The earth which is dead. أَحْيَيْنَاهَا We have given it life. وَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهَا حَبًّا And we have brought out from this earth which is grains. فَمِنْهُ يَأْكُلُونَ So from it they eat. Meaning, in the same way as an earth is dead and we gave it life and from it hub grains come out and you eat it, the most amount of our food is actually the grains, the rice and the wheat and the barley. That is a bigger portion of our food than anything else. Why do we not take a warning and as a sign from the food we eat? Where did this come from? It came from a dead earth. If that was the case, then why will Allah not give life back to us when we have come back to the earth as well? وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا and we have put upon this earth jannatin min nakhilin wa a'nab we have put on this earth jannat meaning gardens min nakhil from date palms wa a'nab and from grapes wa fajjarna fiha min al uyun and we have caused there to gush there forth many many springs li ya'kulu min thamarihi so that they may eat from its produce and from its benefits and its uh, and, and, the, and the fruits that come out وَمَا عَمِلَتُ أَيْدِيهِمْ Meaning, and this is not what their hands have done. أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ Do they not thank me? Meaning, has any human being ever created the plants or the grains? Or has any human being caused the springs to come forth? 
all the grapes to be produced, all the date palms to be there, there in the desert producing these beautiful sweet grapes. No. وَمَا عَمِلَتُ أَيْدِيهِمْ Meaning their hands are not the ones who have done this. Who did this? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who did it. أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ Why do they not thank me? سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلَّهَا Praise be to Allah, glory be to Allah. Raised up is Allah above all things. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلَّهَا He created all the species of these plants on this dunya. مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضِ From that which the earth produces, so it grows from the earth. وَمِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ And from themselves he has created his species and his mate. وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And from that which they have no knowledge as yet of. Meaning glory be to Allah who has produced a mate from each one of the plants and a mate from each one of us, meaning from ourselves. So in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates the, the mates of, for each other. وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And from that which they have no knowledge of. And another sign, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ اللَّيْلُ نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ And another sign is the layl, is the night. So, نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارِ So from the night, we tear from it the day. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ And when we let it go, then lo and behold, they are now dark again. مُظْلِمُونَ Meaning they are in darkness. Meaning, we take the, the, the darkness, the light out of the night, and then suddenly we let it go, and it becomes dark again. وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي And the sun revolves around. لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا The sun revolves around its, its point. مُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا The scholar said, this means under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how. We have no knowledge of this. But we know in the authentic hadith, it is reported that the sun sets underneath the throne of Allah. Every day the sun rises, it asks Allah for permission to rise. And a day in which Allah will not give it permission, will say, no, you do not have permission to rise from the east. You must rise from the west. It will rise from the west, the other side. Only Allah knows how. How do we know what are the different levels until the throne of Allah? So the scholars mention in the following way. They say, here is the earth. Above the earth are seven heavens. And in each of the heavens, there is a, a Bayt al-Ma'mur. In each of the heavens, there is a Kaaba, which is the uh, Kaaba around which the angels revolve around. 70,000 angels revolve around Bayt al-Ma'mur every single day. And they will never ever get a chance to come back again. Another new 70,000, meaning that is how much the angels are in, the, in, in existence. Can you imagine? So, seven heavens. Above the seven heavens is Jannah. And Jannah has a hundred levels. After the levels, above it is water. What do you mean water? Well, because Allah says in the Quran, His throne is above water. So therefore, above Al-Firdaus, which is the highest level of Jannah, above it is water. Above the water are angels. Above the angels is the throne of Allah. And Allah is established on His throne in a manner befitting His majesty. So this is the way the scholars have described it. Wallahu ta'ala alim. Allah knows best. ذَٰلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ That is the taqdeer, the strength and the ability and power of Al-Aziz, the most honored one, Al-Alim, the most knowledgeable. وَالْقَمَرُ and the, and the moon. قَدَّرْنَاهُ manazila. So we have decreed multiple phases for the moon. حَتَّى عَادَكَ الْعُرْجُونِ الْقَدِيمِ Until the moon in its full brightness on the day of Badr. Badr, Badr means a full moon. It returns back to Urjun al Qadim. Urjun is the stalk of a date palm tree. So when you take a stalk of date palm tree, it's long and long and bendy, right? When you let it dry, it becomes bent and thin and yellowish and bent. So Allah Allah is, is referring to the new moon. It's like Urjun al Qadim, very very dry and bent and excessively bent. And it is not even not fully white, it is like yellowish. And that is the new moon. So, until the moon becomes like the bent old date palm stalk, which is the new moon. It does not befit the sun. For it to take over the revolving of the moon. Nor can the night overtake the day. كُلٌّ فِي فَلَكِ يَسْبَحُونَ Every single thing in its orbit, يَسْبَحُونَ Swimming in it. Which shows that, you know, 
the outer space has no gravity. So subhanAllah, all of these things the scholars deduced from, deduced from this verse. They actually knew that outer space has no gravity because it says, yes, Bahun, they're floating in it. Lahum, And another sign for them, Anna hamalna dhurriyatahum, that we have carried his offsprings, meaning the offsprings of the children of Adam, fil fulkil mashhoon, in the fulk, which is the ship, mashhoon, which is made of planks. We carried his dhurriya. Who are these people? These were our parents from the children of Nuh from the people of Nuh that believed in Nuh and then everyone else was drowned. The scholars have two opinions regarding this. Some scholars said that the whole world was drowned. Other scholars said no, only that area where Nuh lived which is the Black Sea, which is, which is the Mediterranean region, only that area was drowned. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, we don't know what the truth is. وَخَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِن مِثْلِهِ مَا يَرْكَبُونَ And we have created مِن مِثْلِهِ From the example of it, مَا يَرْكَبُونَ That which they are now able to ride. Some of the scholars of the said, this verse means just like there is a ship for the oceans, there is a ship for the desert. And the ship for the desert is, is a camel. So Allah is, here is referring to the camel that He created from which we are now able to sail through the land and through the desert and that is the ship that's why the camel is called the ship of the desert when you look at how Allah has made us all of these things able to take us in the land and travel with it and if we wanted we could have shipwrecked the ships so their screams no one would have heard their screams meaning as they're dying as they're screaming for, for someone to save them no one would have heard their screams and no one would have saved them from completely being drowned when they are being shipwrecked. This verse is very important. Illa rahmatan minna, except that I have a lot of rahmah. So Allah's rahmah is what is stopping him from destroying us right now. Like guys, have you noticed how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us even though we're sinning? Because remember in the authentic hadith, the Prophet said, Allah said in the authentic hadith from him, he said, Verily I have written that my mercy overcomes my anger. That is not only in the day of judgment, it's actually active now. So Ikhwani, the only thing that we, we, we must do in order to, to bring on His mercy is what Allah says in the Quran. He says, Allah will not punish them, O Muhammad Sallallahu as long as you are amongst them. What if Rasul Sallallahu is not amongst us? Then look at the rest of that verse. Allah will not punish them as long as they make tawbah to me. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنَّا وَمَتَاعًا إِلَى حِينَ Except as a mercy from us and as a provision until a little while. إِلَى حِينَ حِينَ means over here death. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ And when it's said to them, إِتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And when it is said to them, fear that which is in between, between you or in front of you or behind you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ That you may have mercy, they become arrogant. وَمَا تَأْتِيهِم مِّنْ آيَةٍ مِّنْ آيَةٍ رَبِّهِمْ And وَمَا تَأْتِيهِم There does not come to them مِّنْ آيَةٍ From the signs مِّنْ آيَةٍ رَبِّهِمْ From the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal إِلَّا كَانُوا Except that they are عَنْهَا Against these signs مُعَرِدِينَ They turn away from these signs Yaqwati How many signs does Allah Azza wa Jal give us within ourselves? In our own life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives multiple signs but we keep turning away from it وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْكُمُ اللَّهِ And when, when it is told to them, give sadaqah. Look at this verse, amazing verse. He said, when it is said to these people, these disbelievers, أَنْفِقُوا give sadaqah مِمَّا رَزَقْكُمُ اللَّهِ From what Allah has already given you. قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who disbelieve, they say, لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا To those who believe, أَنُطْعِمُوا Shall we feed man, those who لَوْ, لو يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ that if Allah wanted, at'amah, He would have fed them Himself. In antum illa fi dalali mubin. Rather, you are in manifest error. Meaning, why are we going to feed the ones who, if Allah wanted, well, Allah would have fed Himself? Can you see how these people are attributing their miserliness to Allah? Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wanted, He could have fed them, yes. But Allah decreed that this dunya be a test. So He made certain people rich and other people poor. So that 
the test of the rich be whether they actually feed the poor and the test of the poor be whether they are patient and ask Allah. وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدِ And they say, when will this promise come true? إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If indeed you are truthful, they want to know when the day of judgment will come. مَا يَنْظُرُونَ They will not be looking, meaning they will be waiting for it or doing something, except that they will hear only one sayha, except one scream, تَأْخُذُهُمْ وَهُمْ يَخْصِمُونَ that, it, that will take them whilst they are, meaning that they're debating each other. This verse is referring to the point that whilst they are doing business, whilst they're debating in their markets and doing business, it will be only a scream that they will hear that that is when the day of judgment will begin. And that will be that the worst of people will be existing on this dunya and they will be in their markets doing business. At that point, they will hear a scream and the scream will start the day of judgment. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ تَوْسِيَةً so when it comes, when the scream comes, لا يستطيعون, they will not be able to tawsiya, to give a farewell goodbye, or a farewell parting advice. وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Nor will they be able to run back to their families to protect them when the day of judgment happens. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And the sur, meaning the horn, has been blown into. What is the sur? The, the Prophet ﷺ said, the sur is a horn in which it is blown into. So that is the instrument that has been given to this angel called Israfil to blow into. In one authentic hadith it is reported that Israfil is an angel who does not blink. Because he is afraid that if he blinks, the command might come at that time and he might end up delaying the day of judgment, waiting for the command to come. In one authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ woke up with a bad dream. So suddenly Aisha was asleep. And she felt the Prophet waking up very suddenly. She also woke up and said, Ya Rasulullah, be at rest. What's wrong? What's wrong? So the Prophet said, how can I rest? When I have seen the angel of the horn, who is Israfil, has taken a deep breath and he has puffed out his cheek and he has put the horn into his mouth and he is now looking at the throne waiting for the command to be given. Meaning, Israfil has gotten ready. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, When I die, there is nothing else remaining except for you to wait for the last hour. فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ It is as if from Ajdath is the graves. إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ To their Lord running. So they'll be running, they'll be rushing out of their graves, coming and running to Allah Azawajal. قَالُوا They will say, يَا وَيْلَنَا Woe to us! مَنْ بَعَثَنَا Who has resurrected us from our deep sleep who has resurrected us from a deep sleep in our graves the angels will say Hada, this Rahman is what the most merciful has promised and the messengers were definitely truthful it is nothing but one scream of the horn then it is as if Jami'un, all of this creation, Ladaina Muhdarun, will be present in front of me, present in front of me. Just one scream. We will be resurrected on that day, all our forefathers and our offsprings, and all animals, including dinosaurs, including everything that is in the oceans, will be resurrected all on that day. Muhdarun, presented in front of Allah in rows and ranks. Can you imagine that day? فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا So today, no human being will be harmed. وَلَا تُجَزَوْنَ Or anyone will be recompensed. إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Except by what you used to do in this dunya. This is why it is not enough to simply believe. You must act. إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِحُونَ إِنَّ verily Ashab al-Jannah, the people of Jannah, the companions of Jannah. Al-Yawm, today, meaning on the day of judgment, fi shughulin, will be in a very important affair, meaning they're busy. Don't trouble them by asking them, calling out to them. Some of the scholars mentioned that this statement will be said to the people of, of the fire. Because the people from the fire will be calling out to people of Jannah all the time. So the, the, the response to them will be, Inna ashab al-Jannah al yawm fi shughulin faqihun. Today, the people of Jannah, they're busy. Don't bother them. Hum wa azwajuhum. 
they and their wives fi dhilalin are under dhilal <coughs> ibn qayyim rahimahullah he talks about the day when the believers will meet their wives and their spouses who will be their soulmates forever in eternity and he talks about how imagine a man who's been lost in the seas for many years and his family has almost lost all hope of his return and thinks that he has no chance of coming back to him suddenly this man one day comes back home and then imagine the the way his wife will behave imagine the way his children will behave the utter disbelief the utter enjoyment the utter happiness the first embrace this is exactly how your wives in jannah will behave on the day you come to them hum wa azwajuhum they and their wives fi dhilalin are in the shade ala al araik upon couches muttaqiun reclining shade from what shade from the light of the throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there's no shade, there's no light from sun over there there's only the light from the throne of allah so which is there lahum fiha faqihatun wa lahum ma yad'un for them is every type of fruit and for them is whatever they ask for salamun qawlan mir rabbir rahim salam meaning a statement that will be said to them whenever they look up whenever they ask for something of the peace on you peace salam is the absence of difficulty so salam means peace but actually it means perfect life peace as a statement that will be said from the rabb from the allah rahim the most merciful rabb the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided his mercy into 100 parts only one part he sent to this dunya 99 parts is for the believer on the day of judgment also in the quran <coughs> allah says to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and tell my slaves that indeed i am the the ghafur and the rahim wamtazu al-yawma ayyuha al-mujrimun so stand out all you mujrimun all you wrong doers today meaning stand out today you're going to be discovered so the scholars of the tafsir said this means that the jews will be grouped with the jews the christians will be, will be grouped with the christians the fire worshipers will be grouped with the fire worshipers and then they'll all be dealt with on their own because allah azza wa jalla will will put them into groups this is why ikhwani my brothers this is islam it's very important to be with the believers it's very important to live with the believers it's very important to die with the believers because you'll be raised up with the people that you love today our youth they don't love muslimin their idols are not umar and abu bakr and others and so it's a it's a fear the fear is because allah azza wa jalla says you'll be raised up with the people that you love so the real battle today is a battle for the hearts and minds alam ahad ilaykum have we not ordained upon you ilaykum to you O children of Adam, Allah ta'abud the shaitan, that you should not worship shaitan. Question is, are we really worshiping shaitan? The reality is, listening to him in something which he has ordered against the order of Allah is actually worship. So in fact, when the verse in the Quran was revealed, the Jews took their, their scholars as their gods other than Allah. So one of the Sahaba who was Jewish before, and he had accepted islam he stood up and said but ya rasulullah we never used to worship them so rasul rasulullah sallam said did you not listen to them when they made a halal haram and a haram halal so they said yes we did they said well that is your worship of them obeying the shaitan in a matter in which allah has given you an alternative ruling is worshiping shaitan over worship of allah azza wa jalla innahu lakum aduwwun mubin verily he is to you a manifest enemy he is a clear enemy why are you worshiping this man wa an ya'buduni and that you should worship only me hadha siratu mustaqim this is the straight path wa laqad adalla minkum jibillan kathira wa laqad and he has indeed adalla has misguided minkum from you o human beings jibillan is like a lot of people so large groups of people he has misguided afalam takunu ta'qilun So can you not therefore have logic and understand? I Meaning, have you not seen how many groups of people from the Ad, Thamud, Lut, and the Fir'aun, etc., that he has misguided, Shaitan has misguided? Afalam takunu taqilun. Don't you have sense to see how Allah has destroyed them? Hadhi jahannam ulati kuntum tuwadun. This is the jahannam that all oh, you disbelievers were promised. Islaw hal yoma. Enter this jahannam al yom today. bima kuntum takfurun because of what you used to disbelieve in then the next verse is the powerful verse where allah azza wa jalla says 
the witnesses that will witness against us. Al yawma nakhtimu ala afwahim. Today, al yawm nakhtimu is so that we will put a seal ala afwahim on their faces, on their mouths. Wa tukallimuna aidihim and their hands will speak. Wa tashhadu arjuluhum and their legs will also speak and witness. Bima kanu yaksibun with what they used to do. We know that our skin will speak. Our ears will speak, our hands will speak, our legs will speak, our private parts will speak on that day. Except our mouth. Our mouth will not be allowed to speak, meaning against the witness of these things, because the mouth is lying. But everything else will witness on the Day of Judgment against us. So what are the witnesses on the Day of Judgment? Seven witnesses that the scholars have mentioned. The first witness against us on the Day of Judgment are people and mankind. It's very important to have good friends. So they will either witness for you or against you. The second witness are the angels. And the proof of that is in Surah Qaf. And his Qareed, meaning his angel, will say, Oh my Lord, this is every single thing that, it, that he has done in this dunya present in front of you. Number three is the book itself. The book of deeds will witness either for us or against us. And from the books is the Quran as well that will witness for us or against us. And you will see the Mujrimeen looking inside the book and they will say what is wrong with this book there is no big thing or small thing i've done except that it is in it the fourth witness ikhwati, is the earth on that day the earth will speak about its tales allah will recreate the earth and the earth will speak oh allah whilst he was on this part of me he did this sin the fifth witness <coughs> will be our body parts the legs and the hands will all witness number six the prophet ﷺ will witness and how will it be when we bring a witness for every ummah and we will bring you as a witness against them. So the Prophet ﷺ will be a witness either for us or against us. Meaning he will witness that, oh Allah, I gave them the message, but they, they are the disbelieved in it. Number seven is Allah himself. Because his name is Shaheed. So therefore you cannot hide. It's because he knows that which all other creation of his may not know. He knows what's in the heart, for example, which the angels might not know, for example. So Allah is the biggest of witnesses. Subhanallah. So that is the seven witnesses, Ikhwani. Total, totally surrounded. And if we wanted, so we would have poked out their, their eyes, or completely sealed off their eyes and removed the ability for them to see. So they would not be able to see the sirat, and how would they be able to see that? Meaning, if we wanted, we could have removed their eyesight, but we did not. We gave the disbelievers eyesight in this dunya to look and find the truth. But unfortunately, they still could not see. If we wanted, we would have paralyzed them or stopped them. If they committed a sin, we would have stopped the person in that place. So they would not be able to move on, meaning move forward. Nor go back. Meaning if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make a seen of us in this dunya and to take us to account in this dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have paralyzed us in the spot where we did the sin this is the power of Allah but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to commit sins and then keep on moving and moving off and whoever we increase in their life we will do the opposite to him in his physic in his physique what is Allah saying here Whoever we give long life, Nunakisuhu will do the opposite, fil khalq, in his creation. Meaning what? Meaning we're giving him long life or we're giving him less fitness. We're giving him long life or we're making him more older and weaker and frail. Afala yaqilun. So do they not understand? Even if you have long life, do you not see how you are eventually going to die? Because even as long as you're living, you're also getting weaker and more frail and more diseased and you're eventually going to go towards your grave. So let not the long life fool you, or that they are not going to be taken to account. Don't they have sense? Now he moves on to talking about Rasulullah and he says, الشعر, We have not taught him poetry. Yambagila, and it does not befit a prophet of God to be a poet. Because poetry has a lot of false statements in it. In huwa illa dhikrun wa Qur'anu mubin. It is nothing but a dhikr, a reminder, and a Quran, a book to be read, Mubin, a manifest book that is meant to be read, not meant to be stuck up in the walls. Liyunzira man kana hayyan, in order to give 
warnings to the one who is alive. This is why this, this surah, this verse shows that this surah should not be read to the dead people. Because the Quran says here, within Surah Yasin it says in this verse number 70, so that you may warn the one who is alive or the one who remembers Allah, so that the punishment, the statement of punishment may be affirmed upon the disbelievers. Have they not seen? Anna khalaqna that we have created lahum for them mimma amilat aydina from what our hands have produced. So what Allah's hands have produced, what is it? An'am meaning cattle. Fahum laha malikun. So they are now possessing or in control of the cattle. So now Allah gives the example of cattle and how cattle is a sign for us. Wa dhallalnaha. Dhallalnaha meaning we have made them obedient to you. Lahum for them. فَمِنْهَا رَكُوبُهُمْ وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ So some of them we ride and some of them we eat from their meat and we eat from their milk. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ And for them, meaning for human beings, from the cattle are manafi' are numerous blessings. وَمَشَارِبْ And lots of drink from their milk. أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ Are they not thankful? This verse has been used by the scholars of Islam to allow uh, transplants from cattle. So if we take for example bones of cattle because of a, a child was born without a, a leg for example, we can take the bone and transplant into the into the child. Or take a cow valve, this is very common. If a child is born without a valve or has a defective valve, we can take a cow heart valve and put it into the child. They have been made for us. So we can do with them what we want as long as it is for our benefit. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ وَمَشَارِبْ And for them is many many blessings. Like what? Like their fur, like their leather for example. So so many blessings from the cattle. وَمَشَارِبْ And drinks. أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ So do they not thank me? وَاتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ آلِهَا And they have taken other gods other than Allah as their deity of worship. لَعَلَّهُمْ يُنصَرُونَ So that perhaps they think that they may be helped. لا يستطيعون نصرهم. They will not ever be able to help them. ولهم جند محضرون. In this verse, verse seventy-five, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says is that these idols will never be able to help them when they ask them for help. On top of it, the disbelievers they have become armies in defense of the idols. فلا يحزن كقولهم. So let their statement, don't let this meaning make you sad. Inna na'lamu, verily we know, ma yusirruna wa ma yu'linun. We know every single thing that they're doing secretly or in public. Awalam yaral insana, has insan not seen. Anna khalaqnahu min nutfa, that we have created him from nutfa, from a despicable fluid that that came out of the human being, from which a clot of blood happened from the discharge of the male and the female. And in, we created you from this despicable fluid and now you are argumentative standing in front of me. Look how powerful this verse is. فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمُ مُبِينَ So how an arrogant debater is he? Khasim is the one who debates. Mubin, manifest debater. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا And he has put forward for us mathal, an example. Meaning, he said, oh, God is just like so and so. Oh, Jesus Christ is like God. And he has put an example for my Lordship. <clears throat> and he has forgotten where he came from. <laughs> Who will recreate this bone one when it is dust? Meaning what? That mankind, when he thinks that things cannot be resurrected, that is only because he's thinking Allah is like creation. He's thinking, thinking Allah is like human beings who cannot put life back into the dead after it has become dust. Yes, human beings cannot recreate the dead from dust. But that is not Allah. Allah is different. But I am God. I am the one who created him when he was nothing. So why can I not put life back into the dead after it has become dust? So the main reason why the Quraysh thought Allah could not give life back to dead is because they, they thought Allah's power is as insignificant or limited as is the limited power of human beings. قُلْ يُحْيِي Say to them, Allah will give life back to it. 
الذي أنشها أول مرة the one who has given life to it the very first time وهو بكل خلق عليم and he is most knowledgeable about all his creation الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا يا إخواني this is very important verse this one the one who has made for you from the green trees fire meaning from this wet tree that has water inside it Allah has made fire for you so can you not see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from something he can give something else rise to something else from water he can give rise to fire meaning from a wet tree he can give rise to fire why can he not not, not give life from something that is dead because water and fire are opposites correct but from a, re- a green tree that has wa- is watery he gives you fire the opposite why can he not give you life from something that which is dead which is soil and sand faida antum minhu tuqidun and now here you go you light your fires from these two green trees awa laysa alladhi khalaqa as-samawat is it not possible that the one who has created the heavens and the earth be qadirin that he has the ability ala ay yakhluqa mithlahum that he can recreate something like it which is human beings bala bala meaning of a surety he can wa huwa al khalaqul alim he is the khalaq he is the most worthy creator al alim the one who is most knowledgeable about how to do it inna ma amruhu verily his affair idha arada shay'an if he wants something ay yaqula lahu that he simply says to it kun fayakun be and it is the example of isa was kun fayakun the example of adam kun fayakun fa subhanalladhi so glory be to allah bi yadihi malakutu kulli shay in his hands the the ownership or the kingship of every single thing kulli shay of every single thing wa ilayhi turja'un and to him is your return on the day of judgment zakallahu khairan wa rahmatullahi wa